Okay, thank you, Tom. Morning, everyone. Um, probably not good to leave it to the lawyer to wrap up if you want brevity. No. Um, we're already past time, so I will try to keep it brief. Uh, first of all, thanks to Tech America and my panelists. Um, for me, this is a, a subject that's near and dear to my heart. Um, as Tom mentioned, I was a, a crypto engineer in a previous life. I worked at NSA and was doing, um, oh, I guess the other thing I have to mention, disclaimer, uh, these are my own views, not of the commission, not of my firm, not of my clients. Um, but the, the other part of the disclaimer is I wasn't the first person to mention PKI. So um, Sonia was the first, just for the record. Uh, the reason I say that is I, I got involved in this space many, many years ago at NSA doing PKI-related things. Um, I've seen you know, the technology progress to a point where um, we don't mention it as much, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, we were talking before the session about how identity management, uh, and like Bruce, I, I would shy away from that and use authentication for all the reasons, authentication for all the enabler. It's not a be all and end all. You know, going out and buying a technology solution for this is not going to solve all your problems. Um, but I think, uh, what, what I was asked to speak on is the, the commission and, and what we did and then talk about some trends. Um, I think the overarching comment I would make is that this is uh, an exercise in balance. We've heard a number of different issues in this space and I think the challenge here is trying to find the right balance between those, perhaps the biggest being around privacy versus security. Um, the thing that I would assert with respect to that particular balance is it's not static. So the solution that we all collectively come up with today is not necessarily going to remain the same you know, as things change, as threats change, as our views towards privacy change. So that's a balance that's gonna, I think, shift over time. Um, in terms of the, the commission, um, I think you see reflected in the, recommenda in the report and in the recommendations the, that notion of balance. Um, first of all, as Bruce mentioned, the, the commission did not recommend that identity management and authentication be mandatory. Okay, it's, it's something that is a, an opt-in type of system, except in certain circumstances, most uh, importantly, critical infrastructure. So for critical infrastructure, having strong uh, authentication based on in-person proofing, we believe, or the commission believed, was an important part of the, the solution here. Um, because what, what you're doing there is taking a risk-based approach. When you have people or machines dealing with critical infrastructure, you want to make sure those people or machines are authenticated. Um, so that, that risk, that notion of a risk-based approach is also important. Um, we already talked about the, the person and the machine. Um, balancing security and civil liberties, um, we also saw that in the, uh, the NSTAC report and uh, Melissa's report. So I think everyone that the gratifying thing for me is that everyone is recognizing that identity management and authentication uh, are important <coughs> issues. Um, but again, the challenge is getting to a point where it gets uh, accepted by all of the stakeholders. Um, and to do that, one of the things, one of the other things we were discussing um, before the session was the notion of a security culture. We are not yet to a point where when you look at all of the different players that, uh, you know, Trying to drive toward a holistic and coordinated type of solution is important, but until you get buy-in by all of the major stakeholders, it's going to be difficult to roll out a system that is going to be able to be relied upon by all of those stakeholders. I think we are seeing aspects of that in certain areas. Um, you know, I, I talk to a lot of folks who, um, you know, are working on policy-related issues are working on solutions in this area. Um, as Sonia mentioned, a lot of them are, are kind of stovepipe. Um, I'm actually working with two clients, one in the aerospace and defense industry and one in the healthcare industry, where they're actually rolling out a solution because the demand is there. Uh, m many years ago, um, Stuart Baker and I were chatting, this, this is way back when we were talking a lot about PKI, um, and one of the comments is, uh, PKI is going to be the, the solution uh, is going to be the solution tomorrow, and it's always going to be that way. You know, so it's always going to be, it'll get here tomorrow, we'll get there, we'll get there tomorrow. Um, uh, again, I, I don't think that's the be all and end all, um, but I do think we are at a point where the momentum has built up. When you have reports that are now sitting on the president's desk related to identity management, it has reached uh, a level where I think we're, gonna, we're, we're going to, um, 
be able to start rolling out solutions that are, and this is I think one of the, the most critical issues in terms of path forward or consensus is that, that may be emerging, um, the notion of, of interoperability. You know, the ability to take a credential that has been issued by, you know, either my firm or some uh, contractor that's working for my firm and be able to use that to authenticate myself maybe to get into the building here or to go online for government services. Again, recognizing, as Bruce said, that there are different roles. Um, I think we are getting to that point, um, and as the dialogue continues amongst groups like this, and as these different reports come forward, we're going to get to that point. Um, again, I think all of this uh, discussion has to be focused on this technology as an enabler. Um, with the, from, from the standpoint of technology, again, the balance there has to be between a balance, uh, a balance between technology and policy. So I think um, in, in some of the early discussions on PKI, one of the, uh, Brian O'Higgins, one of the early pioneers in this area said PKI shot itself in the foot. We tried to teach everyone about Alice and Bob and public and private keys, and you know, as Bruce mentioned, this has to be simple. Um, the other analogy that, that I like to use, and I don't take credit for this, somebody else uh, gave this to me, it's the notion of the big dumb ape, the red button, and the yellow banana. You know, the ape knows to hit the button to get the banana. And it, it can't be any more difficult than that. Think about your ATM. You go in, you put your card in, you put in your PIN, you get money out. You, don't, you know, most folks don't realize the transaction that's actually happening behind the scenes. They don't know about the cryptographic processes. They know they put in their money in their card and they get money out. So it has to be simple. Um, I would again come back to this notion that a, a security culture is needed. Um, Sonia, I, I jotted notes here. I, I, the one note I jotted when Sonia mentioned uh, what she does, you know, she digitally signs forms, she digitally signs emails, she encrypts uh, content that's sensitive. I would assert that the, you know, the, the general uh, population is not to that level, but that's where we need to get them. We need to get it to a point where um, it's so seamless. Uh, Tom and I were chatting beforehand about when do we get to a point where, you know, essentially security becomes seamless. It's where it gets to a point where somebody may not necessarily know that they're actually doing that, but the content is getting encrypted and the authentication is happening. So, um, and I think, um, just to wrap up, I think from a, from a congressional perspective, we are starting to see, although um, I, I think from a, from a congressional standpoint, there's a lot more education that has to occur. There are a number of bills up on the Hill. There are kind of, I would say they're all over the map. Um, some of them are very expansive. Some of them are you know, focused on a specific issue. Um, but I think we are, are starting to see um, the, the, the folks up on the Hill understanding this issue and getting to a point where um, we will get some legislation, hopefully in the, I don't, I don't know about this term, but um, perhaps by next term, that will start to address some of the data security issues and particularly identity management. So I look forward to your questions. Great. Um, what I'd like to do is ask one or two questions uh, for the whole panel and then open it up to the audience. Uh, sort of a, as a general uh, rule of practice, um, if you do ask a question, please um, identify your name and where you're, you're coming from for the panelists. Uh, I guess the first question I have for the panel is, um, <clears throat> Are we at a point where there is an emerging consensus? Randy was talking earlier about there's for PK, there's always tomorrow. Are we at a state, a place where it's always tomorrow, or um, are there points now where suddenly there's um, a basis for action? Guy was uh, uh, speaking of um, the voluntary uh, uh, participation of consumers in a national identity uh, program. And, uh, Bruce made a similar comment. Now, I was just wondering if the panel thought, is there an emerging consensus, and what would you say about that? So I can start. I asked somebody uh, who's in the uh, credentials uh, business uh, the other day, where are we on the curve, right? At some point, this, like any other thing, will take off, right? And where is the knee of the curve? And so these are, these are guys who produce, you know, cat cards and the like.